Endangered worldwide, Barbary macaques have recently been given the highest conservation status by the Convention on the Illegal Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora. Although they are abundant here, this new sterilization program aims to get the population down to around 180 and maintain it humanely. I think people know that our policy is not to have massive culls. Occasionally we have to take out particular animals for particular problems, but not to have big culls as in the past. And therefore we had to find alternatives. We exported a group um, which has worked very successfully and resolved a lot of problems. But because the, the macaques are healthy, well fed and so on, the population keeps on increasing. Um, in order to try and, and control that, we had to go down the avenue of contraception. Mark Pissarro and the vet clinic, working together with the rest of the macaque team, have introduced this system, which is a, a permanent sterilization. Um, but we are choosing, or well, the team is choosing, um, specific females who have already had at least one, possibly two young. It's important for the social structure of the group that mothers should have children in that group. And therefore, uh, if, they've had mother, if they've had children, they are selected and the operation is carried out. Then they will carry out on, on functioning normally, but they will not have any further young. And this will uh, control the number of young uh, on the in the long term. The vet clinic has set up this new operating room, with the government having bought around £15,000 worth of specialised equipment. By comparison, says Dr Gortes, a cull can cost up to twice that. And although contraceptive implants have been used before, they're not totally effective, need replacing and can cause behavioural problems, unlike this surgical contraception. It's obviously you have a state in monkey and then we put, uh, we make small incision, just by umbilicus, and we introduce the, the camera to there and then we make another incision. We locate the, well I locate the ovaries and the, the uterus and then the fallopian tubes are just a question of of, uh, of burning the fallopian tube just to sterilise it, so therefore you know, the ovum can't get into the uterus to, to be sterilised. How long does it take uh, to recover from this and, and to reassimilate back into macaque society? Oh, it's really quick. It's the beauty of it. You know, the procedure takes approximately about 10 minutes to do. I mean, it takes more time to set up the equipment. The equipment takes about half an hour to go now to set up everything, sterile, sterile situation. So obviously you're inserting probes into the animal, so therefore it's, the sterility is, is paramount. Um, so, but once the procedure is, is undergoing the cases now, after, getting, after doing quite a few of them now, it's taking me more or less about 10 minutes from start to finish. So it's working pretty well. Um, and then once we put them back, within an hour in most cases, they're back into a group. So it's, 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 it's just it doesn't knock them back at all. So it works very well, they're, they're sterile and they're back into, back into the group without, without any, with, a, with a minimum disruption. Macaques give birth to around one baby a year over up to 20 breeding years. They go into heat in winter and give birth in spring, with a gestation period of around five and a half months. So how similar are they to us? Well, actually, it's something which we, I have to adapt to, because I'm obviously more used to dogs and cats, and their, 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 their sort of family, uh, the female organs is totally different to, to, to the macaques. The macaques are very similar to ours, so therefore they have a body, they have two long fallopian tubes and they have the ovaries on the end of that. So it's a totally different structure to what I'm used to on a, on a, on a daily basis. So they're yeah, very similar to us, you know, it's the same evolutionary tree, so therefore it's very similar to ours. The programme is being rolled out together with another management tool, a genetic fingerprinting initiative. We're doing that in parallel uh, and um, there's been some genetic work done in the past by universities from outside Gibraltar but we now thought that we should uh, take steps ourselves and the, the team is collecting uh, samples, um, it can be done through blood, it can even be done through hair and um, arranging for them to be sent uh, overseas for a, a, a genetic analysis so we'll be able to understand the relationship between the different groups and if we compare it to material from North Africa, also we can understand where exactly they may have come from and the relationship uh, with their North, North African brothers and sisters. According to Dr Gortes, now that macaques' impact on our built-up areas has been tackled, their management can be fine-tuned, so that we can once again start to think of our monkeys as an asset and not as pests.